Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about the long rest. If you check your player's handbook on page 186, you will find the details for the long rest. To gain the benefits of a long rest, you must spend at least 8 hours performing downtime or light duties. I'm going to explain to you exactly what that consists of very shortly. You must be conscious and you must have at least one hit point at the start of your long rest. So what can you do during a long rest? Well, you can do the following. You can sleep, but you don't actually have to sleep. You can read, if you want to. You can perform sentry duty, but for no more than two hours. You can fight or be involved in combat, but it has to be for less than an hour. You can cast spells, but that also has to be less than an hour. You can walk or perform a strenuous activity, but it has to be for less than an hour. You can talk if you want to. You can eat. You can engage in an elf trance. You can perform light duties. So any combination of fighting, casting spells or walking or strenuous activity, um, that can only take place for less than an hour. If you want to concentrate on a spell, that also has to be for less than an hour. So what can't you do during a long rest? Well, the first thing is, you can't engage in the elf trance for four hours only. Okay, That's only going to take up part of your long rest. And I'll do a complete video on the elf trance because it really needs its own video to explain why. If you're going to perform sentry duty, it can't be for more than two hours. If you're going to be involved in any kind of fight or combat, it can't be for one or more hours. If you're casting spells, it can't be one hour or more. If you're involved in walking somewhere, it can't be for an hour or more. You cannot be involved in anything strenuous for one hour or more. So what does strenuous mean? Well, that's really going to be up to your dungeon master, so you check with them. And, as I've said before, any combination of fighting, casting spells, or walking for one hour or more, you can't do. So what about running during your long rest? Well, that's pretty strenuous. I would check with your dungeon master in terms of how they're going to make the call with that. So can you ride a horse during your long rest? Check with your dungeon master, but I would say that riding a horse is strenuous, and so, therefore, you probably can't do it for anything more than like less than an hour. Um, if you do it for more than an hour or an hour, then you're probably going to break your long rest. What about if I want to craft a magic item or an item of some kind? I would say the same thing applies. It's strenuous, therefore you're going to have to make sure it's less than an hour. It can't be an hour or more, otherwise you'll break that long rest. But check with your dungeon master because it doesn't spell that out completely in the player's handbook. What if I want to scribe a spell from another spell book into my spell book? Will that break my long rest? Well, check with your dungeon master again. It doesn't spell that out in the player's handbook. I would say that scribing a spell is like uh, creating a magic item or um, casting a spell. Same sort of stuff being involved. So less than an hour fine, an hour or more going to break your long rest. At the end of a long rest you're going to have a whole lot of benefits, so what are they? Well the first one is you're going to get all of your hit points back. Any that you've lost you get them all back. You're going to regain half of your spent hit dice. Now if you're level 1 that means you get one hit dice back, not half a hit dice. You can't get back half a hit dice. Uh, if you are an odd level, say level 3, that means you're rounding down the number of hit dice you get back, which means you can only get one hit dice back. Which means the following day, if you spend one hit dice and you only get half back, you only get one. Which means it equates to basically the even levels work out fine, the odd levels work out a bit weird because you wind up with it taking three days to get back all of your hit dice. I suggest you talk to your dungeon master about how to sort out the odd numbers if you're only getting half of your hit dice back. Uh, and you're an odd level. Regain all of your spent spell slots, which is always good. You regain all of your race abilities. You regain all of your feat abilities. 
and you also regain all of your class abilities. So there are some obvious reasons why it's a good idea to take a long rest. Now there are a couple of things that I need to talk about and that is you can only take one long rest in a 24 hour period. And the other thing is you don't get yourself confused with sleeping and a long rest because you don't actually have to take a long rest at all but you must sleep. The long rest mechanic and the sleep mechanic are completely different. Even though you can sleep during a long rest, you don't actually have to sleep during a long rest. And although you have to sleep, you don't actually have to take a long rest every 24 hours at all. You could go without a long rest for days if necessary. So another question that tends to pop up is, do I need to take a long rest before my character levels up from say level 2 to level 3 or level 1 to level 2? Well, there's nothing in the player's handbook that says you have to take a long rest, a short rest, or sleep before your character levels up. It's really completely up to your dungeon master. I think I've pretty much covered everything I needed to in terms of a long rest, but if there are any questions, make sure that you ask them in the comments. That's everything I have to say on the long rest. I hope this video was informative. Uh, please share, like, and subscribe if it was. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I will answer those questions as best I can. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s. Oh, that's oh.